Hey guys, Rip Shears here at Blue Shield Tactical Systems. Uh, I wanted to talk to you today about uh, a topic that's been brought up. I've seen it on protester signs. I've had friends to bring it up. As a matter of fact, I was training today in martial arts, and, and I had a friend that brought that, uh, this, uh, this topic up, and he said that you know police officers are not getting enough training. And we in the law enforcement can agree with you in that, that we're not getting enough training. But, and, and most officers want more training. But how are they supposed to get that when the money is not there? That's the thing about it. We've actually had officers to come to our training that have paid for it out of their pocket, guys. And that is ridiculous for an officer to have to pay for their own training, especially since some of these officers are making less than $40,000 a year working in some of these areas. Uh, you know, and so those the, the department, especially in the major metro areas, guys, they just they have uh, so many officers, and they don't have enough money to be able to train those officers and everything they would like to train them in. Plus, you would be surprised at the amount of training officers already do. You know, they have state mandated training that they have to go to. For instance, it may be taser, baton, pepper spray, all those things that they have to get recertified, less lethal. They have to get recertified on that. Stop sticks, they have to get recertified on that. There's so much training they actually do. And then there's special interest group training, right, that they have to do. So there's special interest groups that go to the legislator and say, you know, we're mad about this particular thing. So what happens is they create a class on it. And then the officers have to do that as well. You know, so there's so much training that they actually do go to, uh, and there's more training that most of them would like to go to, but they just, they don't get a chance to, uh, because by the time, uh, you know, maybe they get that one class a year, then all the money is gone. It's all, it's, it's all been spent. Uh, and so, you know, this also goes back to guys, if, you know, it's easy to sit back and yell that officers need more training, especially from some of these celebrities, right? That the officers need more training. I've heard them say that. And, uh, you know, you have the money to donate to the departments. If you want to increase their training budget, why don't you do it? You know, it's easy, like I said, to sit back and say, I want to make a difference, but are you making a difference? You know, are you taking part in it besides just standing around with a sign? Are you doing something to help out? You know, and that could be said for all of us, right? Are we doing Are we doing our part to make things better? You know, uh, are we Are we taking an active role in it? We're a training company. That's what we do. We try to train law enforcement the best techniques possible. We train in de-escalation. We teach that as an instructor course. We do everything we possibly can to try to make officers safer on the street. And you know. The money needs to come from somewhere, but you know, the public generally, they will say, uh, you know, we don't want our taxes raised, even though the officers are needing training or we're needing more officers on the street. Because right now, guys, let me tell you something, most of these departments, if not all of them, are short staffed. Uh, you know, they don't have enough people that are signing up to take law enforcement tests, guys, because nobody wants to, uh, nobody wants to experience what law enforcement is experiencing right now, frankly. Uh, especially not for the type of money that I've been talking about. Some of them making less than forty thousand dollars a year, uh, and experiencing that. I mean, who wants that? You, uh, you know, it's it's ridiculous. Uh, so, also holding your city council and your local leaders responsible. You know, where are they spending that money? Where's that money going? Because it's not going to law enforcement and their training budget. I can guarantee you that generally. So, where's that money going? You know, so asking those questions as well, you know, I think, I think that's important. I think it's important. Uh, the other thing is um, better hiring standards. I hear that question around. Well, we need better, law enforcement needs better hiring standards. I mean, I've heard it. I've even, um, uh, you know, I saw even saw, I think it was one sign that had, you know, better standards or better hiring or something like that on it. Uh, the thing about it is, guys, you'd be surprised how difficult it is and how much of a process it is to actually become a police officer. Uh, it's a difficult process. You know, I, the agency I worked for before I retired, um, I also worked in professional standards, which is the hiring division of the agency. And we hired approximately one out of every 10 to 15 applicants that we had. I mean, you gotta have a clean driving record, you gotta, you gotta take a polygraph, you've gotta take a, uh, a psychological, you know, we even went out and talked to your neighbors to make sure that they didn't have an issue with you. I mean, there was a, a, a thorough background that was done on you. We would talk to your references, we would talk to the people at your job. You know, if you didn't fill out the application right, you would get rejected. I mean, so there is a, a, a stringent standard to become a police officer. And guess what? Out of those, let's say one out of every 10 that does get hired, 50% uh, of those don't even make it through the FTO program. 
so to say we need better hiring staff, I don't know what else they could do. You know, uh, and you know, here's what gets me is we always hear people say, uh, and, I've, and I've and I've heard it here lately quite a bit, but I've heard people say, well, I know some good officers, but there's some bad apples. There there sure are some bad apples in law enforcement. And guess what? We can agree with that. There are some bad apples. Uh, but I never hear anyone say, uh, I know some bad apples in law enforcement. Uh, you know, they always say, well, I know some good officers, uh, but there are some bad apples. Well, we would like to know who they are, too, because we would report them, right? Uh, we don't want them in law enforcement either. So are there circumstances like that has happened that uh, push the topic of training? Of course, of course. But also, if we're, if we're going to say just a blanket statement of we need more training, let's also figure out how to do it, right? Let's figure out what it takes to get more training. You know, because I really don't think that the hiring standards is what is. Now, could there be better supervision? Of course there could be better supervision at the sergeant and the lieutenant level. There could be better supervision as well. And everyone, all the way up to the chief of police or the sheriff, holding each level responsible for the other. You know, uh, following up checks and balances. There definitely could be that. Uh, now I want to go into the topic of defunding the police. Uh, <laughs> you know, you can't have it both ways, guys. You can't decide, hey, guess what, uh, you know, we want more training for law enforcement, but now we want to defund the police department. That's crazy. And not only that, how do you think that's going to work out for you? It's not going to work. I, I realize that that's a, that's a, a topic of Black Lives Matter uh, that, that, that they want. That's uh, one of the things that they want. Uh, and that's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, that is uh, tearing at the very fabric uh, of the United States uh, to want that. Uh, that is that is not reasonable whatsoever, you know. Uh, so and how are like again? How are they supposed to get trained if they don't have any money to do so? So, in a good example, guys, uh, would be Chicago. You know, I think it was over Memorial Day weekend. They had ninety something. Uh, I think it was shootings. Can you imagine if no police were there whatsoever in those areas? Uh, there's a lot of people uh, in those poor neighborhoods that just happen to be poor. But, and they know who the thugs are that live in those neighborhoods. And, you know, they're afraid to go outside. They're also afraid to contact the police because they're afraid of retaliation. So can you imagine if the police were not there to be able to protect those people? And those are the people that don't speak out either because they're afraid to speak out. So guys, these are some of the topics that I think it's important to, um, you know, address and talk about. At the same time, especially when we're talking about training for law enforcement, uh, but again, you know, uh, where's that money going to come from? Where, you know, if you want to do donate to your local agency, have at it. I mean, they definitely could use it, especially for the training budget. Uh, but uh, you know, take an active part. Uh, ask questions about it to your local leaders. I mean, where's our budget going? Is it going to trade? Is it going to law enforcement? Or is it going to something else? Is it something that the city actually needs that it's going towards? Uh, you'd be surprised how much cities also, I'll tell you a big spending, that they spend on surveys sometimes that they do. They, uh, uh, they, they, they get a consultant and they spend a, a, lot, a ton of money on surveys sometimes to try to come up with a plan on something. Uh, so, and, and I get that sometimes in certain situations, but there's a lot of money that's out there that you'll find out that is spent in areas where it shouldn't be spent. So, guys, I hope uh, we can have some dialogue about these topics. And... Uh, we wish you the best, and please be safe out there. Thanks.